Welcome back. With every communication piece where the goal is to elicit an action, share knowledge, or instruct, there are basic steps we can take to improve effective communication. The first step is considering the voice. Voice is defined through identifying an audience. Are they children, graduate students, mothers, or microbiologists? What do you want to say to them? How can the content you are providing be effectively targeted and delivered? The sensibility of a younger audience may require a more graphic and playful design, while a general news consumer is less playful and more direct. An educational environment may require more direct and knowledge-rich text and images. Each one of these sites has a distinctive visual language because their target audiences react differently to how content is presented. If all of these websites were text only, black and white, with no images and no hierarchy to the text information, one might be less inclined to want to read them. When considering your website's voice, color can play an important role. Vivid colors are considered younger and playful, while darker and saturated colors convey a serious and authoritative tone. Red is warning or attention, and blues are friendly and inviting. While one might consider color subjective, spending time addressing a color palette will improve the receptivity of your message. The typefaces we use are a third supporting tool in your design kit. The use of letter forms, known as typography, are the fundamental building blocks of language. How a typeface is used is thus critical to communication. One of the more commonly known typefaces is Times, and will come standard on all computers. The term for this typeface is known as a serif typeface. The term serif refers to the ends of the letters and how they taper to a point. A sans serif, meaning without a serif, refers to such typefaces as Arial, a typeface that has flat endings and in general a uniform width to the stroke. If we think of color and typefaces as conveying a personality or voice, then they are design tools that allow us to better communicate with our audience. By being selective with our colors and typefaces, an audience can understand the subtext of our message without necessarily reading the information. A fourth design tool is hierarchy. What do we want the audience to read first, second, and third? Where does our eye go first? One of the most challenging forms of content delivery is seen in news websites. While most of you will not be creating this kind of a site, it illustrates the importance of voice, typography, color, and hierarchy. NPR is an example that delivers a wide range of content. The goal is to allow the audience to know from whom the information is coming from through the use of a logo, mark, or name. Their logo is displayed at the top of the page and is a recognizable mark. Using a large typeface and color for all the headings allows a reader to select a desired topic quickly by scanning the page. Second and third levels of type size and color serve to designate other sections and create a hierarchy of information. In doing so, the viewer is guided through a system to better gather information and quickly find a place of interest. In addition, the navigation column is presented to the left using a distinctly different font and color from the other sections of the page. A fifth design tool is called the grid. The grid is a structure in which content is presented in a systematic form. Most sites have multiple pages, and when a grid is established, it helps present the content in a consistent form across multiple pages. For example, NPR News has a ser series of columns from left to right that contain information in varying degrees. 
The far left is the navigation, while the center includes the main content and the far right features additional news. If we click on the first story, it will take us to the page that looks very similar in the use of typeface and hierarchy of information and also has the same set of column grids. There is always the challenge of competing with advertising, which may not always be the, co the case with an individual's website. Nonetheless, the structure of the site is the same. With, while most of us are not creating an online newspaper, it is important to think about basic design principles and how one chooses to organize information. News sites are often the most complex form an organization from an organizational standpoint, but if well designed, the content is presented using the basic tools of design. While we could discuss many other design details, there are some additional considerations that should be noted. I will not illustrate for the sake of time. White space is a term used to signify areas of design where there is no content and thus that area becomes a place of visual rest for the viewer. Do not feel you need to fill up the page with text and images from left to right and top to bottom. While news sites and other high content delivery sites may pack their viewing area, consider leaving space on the right and left of text columns and use areas of white space or solid color to provide emphasis for those areas that do not have text or image. Contrast, much like typography and color, is a building block of design. Using contrasting elements such as big, small, thin, thick, or color monochromatic, to name a few, can juxtapose elements that create dynamic visuals and in doing so bring greater focus to each website element. And lastly, symmetry and asymmetry are strategies for compositional balance. Symmetrical designs are mirrored layouts on a central axis and are thus more stable, formal presentations. Asymmetrical designs are unbalanced in their layout and thus are more organic or create tension. Asymmetrical designs can hold a viewer's attention longer because they are less predictable to view. This concludes Section 2.